I wanted to make a video about why I'm kind of scared of the stock market right now. Um, and it might not be what you think. I wanted to get your perspective on it. So please put a comment down below on how you feel about this situation. But I started dabbling in putting a little bit of money back in the stock market, which goes against pretty much everything I believe in. Um, but MicroStrategy seemed to be an interesting place. And I talked about this prior in the past in a video about it um, could, due to a possible short squeeze scenario, not financial advice, just something that I was interested in and I still am a little bit interested in. But as I kind of think more and more about it and the more I know about self-custody of my Bitcoin, self-custody of my metals, self-custody of, of my personal belongings, tangibles, etc., um, I go down this rabbit hole of realizing, well, and again, maybe I'm overthinking this, and but hope maybe it helps some people because I would definitely risk mitigate if I haven't thought about this. If I was just all in the stock market and equities, um, what's scary is like 401ks, etc. In this specific scenario that I'm going to lay out here, so I think of it like a funnel of how I get my money, right? So at the top of this funnel, you have exchanges. So you have your TD Ameritrade, your E-Trade, your Scott Trade, your Robinhood, etc. They have made a deal with you where they go, hey, you pay us some sort of little fee or you don't pay us any fee at all and we just give away your information. That's how we make money, <clears throat> Robinhood. Um, but they make an arrangement. They go and buy this equity for you, this stock for you, right? You're hoping that this company did do that, that they actually have your stock and it's not just some number on the screen. You're hoping they actually did do that. Now, if they did do that, which hopefully they did, uh, odds are it's really reaching to think they didn't, but they hold your stock. You don't have custody of it. They have custody of it. And if you want to sell that stock, you have to go to them. You're going to have to hope that they're solvent. You're going to have to ho hope that their app works. You're going to have to hope that their company will pick up the cell phone or the, the landline, wherever you call to make your trades, that that trade desk is open. Now, if there's a lot of people calling in at the same time or if there's a sudden crash in their app like Facebook dropped off of the, the map in a day, that seems to be a concern. Because with Robinhood, they've done some stuff in the past where you're only allowed to sell an equity. Suddenly, that equity is in free fall, uh, the GameStop scenario. And that is very concerning that one exchange could cause that kind of effect and had that kind of power to do so. Um, and it's something that I don't think is widely understood that you don't have custody of these stocks. Um, same thing with these bonds and stuff in a way. And so I'm going to focus on stocks, but like stocks and bonds right now, they scare me, scare me every time I think about them. And I wanted to get your thoughts because maybe I'm overthinking it. Maybe I'm just over the top. But I wanted to warn some people, um, or at least share my thought process, because I believe that it is my personal belief, not financial advice. I believe it's foolish to not have any self-custody of your belongings. And what do I mean by that? If you don't, if you have Bitcoin, for example, and you have it on an exchange like Coinbase, Coinbase is like the same thing as Robinhood in a way. Uh, Robinhood, people are lining up to try to get their Bitcoin out of Robinhood, but we'll see how that works out because they haven't allowed it yet. They're saying they are going to allow it. But Coinbase is an exchange itself. And if you leave your Bitcoin with this exchange, you don't own that Bitcoin. They own that Bitcoin, period. That's, that's the truth. If something happened, look up like Mt. Gox, right? Things like that. If something happens, that it's not up to your control. In that scenario. But if you take that Bitcoin and you send it to your own device where you have all the power, you have all the, the, uh, the seed phrase, you have the password to it, then now you have the custody of that Bitcoin. You can't do that with a stock. You can't take your Apple stock and say, hey, TD Ameritrade, I, I'd like to have my stock in my in my pocket on a device. You know, I'd like to take custody of my stock. They might be able to issue you a share, but then you're back to how do you how do you redeem that share? and on a piece of paper or whatever, like if it was old school. You can't. So that scares me that I can't take real, true self-custody of an equity position. 
And that's the reason I bring it up also is with this new news with the Bitcoin ETF. Sure, it opens up the floodgates. Sure, you know, a lot of um, funds, things like that are going to be looking at Bitcoin and be able to, you know, take that risk because they go, well, look, there's an ETF. Well, it's, it's, it's accepted now and they'll start playing, you know, copycat on Wall Street when they start going into Bitcoin. On the surface, it looks like a good thing. And it probably is a net positive because it's really hard. Um, I won't get too far into the, the talk on that. That's for another video. But if you do go buy an ETF of Bitcoin, you don't actually have the custody of that Bitcoin. You're not taking advantage of the number one utility of it. You know, it's just like a silver ETF. You don't actually own the silver bar. You don't have the silver bar sitting on your on your desk or on your your bookshelf. You that silver bar is trusted within J.P. Morgan's vaults, for example, with SLV. Is that really um, true custody, or do you have to ask somebody for permission for the thing that you're trying to invest in? I don't like this asking for permission thing when it comes to investments. And what scares me is you're trusting. So let's go back to this funnel here. You're trusting the exchange at the top of the funnel, right? Hopefully they bought it. Hopefully they actually have it. They actually bought it. Hopefully they're going to be there and available when your time comes to sell it. That's very big. Their app is going to work. They're going to pick up the phone, all of that. If all of that works out, you're hoping that one of the commercial banks that you use is solvent because what does the exchange do? They're going to ACH or wire transfer your money into the bank. Hopefully that system's working because it's it's failed in the past. It's been down for a day, the Fed wire system and the ACH and all that. So hopefully that works and you get it into the bank. Now you hope that the bank is solvent and that the bank opens its doors and has the ability to serve you as a customer, that they pick up the phone line. Remember when they weren't picking up the phone lines at one point? You're trusting, you're trusting and asking for permission and then Imagine you're in a situation where there's lines to get money out of the bank. I can go, I can get deeper and deeper on it, but I don't want to be like super, uh, like a, like a, try to get people super scared or something. I'm just trying to say, think about your investments and think about where you're parking your money and do you have real ownership of it? Have you thought about the experience of how you're going to get that capital out if you need to get that capital out? Um, it's something I think about every day. And so like, why did I get so big on Bitcoin, for example? I can have self-custody in the digital realm. It's the only thing in the digital realm that I can have true self-custody of. I can't have digital self-custody of, of gold. I don't want to trust an ETF with my silver. You know, I, that's not how it works. And Peter Schiff gets that so wrong where he thinks you can trust a custodian like Brinks or something to hold your metal for you and give you some token against it in the digital realm. It doesn't work like that. The only thing that works like that is Bitcoin. So I don't understand why there's this narrative of it's either metals or Bitcoin. Why not both? Why not both? I don't understand. That's that's how I've been, and I've really done well with the trade. Um, I, I really like my silver, really like my platinum, really like my palladium, and really like my Bitcoin. I like it all because I have real custody of those items. Um, and those, uh, you know, the, I have an actual device with my Bitcoin on it, and I verified it myself. I know it's there. So that's very interesting to me that I can do that. I don't have to go to Coinbase and say, hey, uh, I hope you pick up the phone at the right time when I want to sell it. And I hope when you send it to the bank that they're going to be solvent to answer my, my call to get that money out from them. And then, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm hoping the unit of measure, the dollar itself, is holding its value, right? What if the dollar index fell dramatically in a day? That unit of measure fell dramatically. So there's so much in this, this funnel that you have to trust. And there's this saying in, uh, um, in, in Bitcoin is don't trust verify. And if you can't hold it, you don't own it in metals. That scares me. You know, not your keys, not your coins uh, with the cold storage devices and stuff. It, it, the whole system, and the more I think about it, I get more and more concerned, I guess, about the whole monetary system as, as it is. And I wanted to make this video to just ask you, or does, does this make any sense? Am I just completely just ridiculous bringing this up? Uh, put it in a comment. Let me know if you like the video, throw a like. It really helps. It brings this video out to more people, spreads awareness on this. Um, yeah, I don't want to be some, uh, some Debbie uh, Downer or something like that, you know, but I just get nervous about it all. And I don't like the idea of so much trust 
in this system, especially when you like, I don't have a 401k, for example, but if I did, it would scare me that my money is tied up in this thing. It would scare me that my money is tied up in, in dollars that are being printed at at will. And and if they don't get what they want to go through at the fed, then Yellen is just going to go ex fed chair that suddenly somehow now the secretary of treasury can just mint a coin at whatever weight or denomination she chooses and just go deposit it at the fed who's going to issue more bonds and dilute the currency so it doesn't really it's that's not exactly a system that i want to trust like have that level of trust that all of that funnel is going to work and then when i when it is time to get the money out of that funnel that that money is even going to hold value I hope I didn't get too complicated with it. It's just something on my mind before I, I wrap up my day here and I'm going to post it to the page. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, I plan to make another video tomorrow and over the weekend. I'm looking forward to doing that. Um, again, if you like the video, throw a like. If you want to subscribe to the channel, I'm really trying to get to 25,000 subscribers and we're getting pretty close. So if you want to subscribe, would really appreciate you being a subscriber on the channel. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think of this. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you at the next video.